We're back with our world lead now in a distressing story out of Afghanistan, showing the harsh reality of the humanitarian crisis engulfing the country, especially post-Taliban rule. Desperate families so impoverished, they tell CNN they have no choice but to sell their young daughters into some twisted form of marriage. In this exclusive report, CNN witnesses the tragic fate facing these helpless little girls in this culture where girls and women are too often treated horrifically. The parents gave us full access and permission to talk to the children and show their faces because they say they cannot change the practice themselves. CNN's Anna Corrin reports. In this arid, desolate landscape, not a scrap of vegetation in sight, lies a makeshift camp for some of Afghanistan's internally displaced. <laughs> Among its residents, nine-year-old Pawana. Her bright pink dress squeals of laughter and childhood games, a ruse to the horrors unfolding in this unhospitable environment. <laughs> Pawana's family moved to this camp in Baghdis province four years ago after her father lost his job. Humanitarian aid and menial work earning $3 a day, providing the basic staples to survive. But since the Taliban takeover two and a half months ago, any money or assistance has dried up. And with eight mouths to feed, Pawana's father is now doing the unthinkable. I have no work, no money, no food. I have to sell my daughter, he says. I have no other choice. Pawana, who dreams of going to school and becoming a teacher, applies makeup. A favorite pastime for little girls, but Pawana knows she is preparing for what awaits her. My father has sold me because we don't have bread, rice and flour. He has sold me to an old man. The white-bearded man who claims he's 55 years old comes to collect her. He's bought Pawana for 200,000 Afghanis, just over 2,000 US dollars. Covered up, Pawana whimpers as her mother holds her. This is your bride, please take care of her, says Pawana's father. Of course I will take care of her, replies the man. His large hands grab her small frame. Pawana tries to pull away. As he carries her only bag of belongings, she again resists, digging her heels into the dirt. But it's futile. The fate of this small, helpless child has been sealed. Child marriage is nothing new in poor rural parts of Afghanistan. But human rights activists are reporting an increase in cases because of the economic and humanitarian crisis engulfing the country. <coughs> These are devastating decisions that no parent should ever have to make. And it really speaks to what an extraordinary breakdown is happening in Afghanistan right now. For months, the UN has been warning of a catastrophe as Afghanistan, a war ravaged aid dependent country, descends into a brutal winter. Billions of dollars in central bank assets were frozen after the Taliban swept to power in August. Banks are running out of money. Wages haven't been paid for months while food prices soar. According to the UN, more than half the population doesn't know where their next meal is coming from. And more than three million children under the age of five face acute malnutrition in the coming months. People of Afghanistan need a lifeline. And while a billion dollars has been pledged by UN donors to help the Afghan people, less than half those funds have been received as the international community holds off recognizing the Taliban government. People of Afghanistan will be dying of hunger in the next couple of months, and not just a few. This is just making people more and more vulnerable, and we, we cannot accept that. Sentiments shared by the Taliban. We are asking aid agencies to come back to Afghanistan and help these poor people, otherwise the crisis will worsen. For this family in neighboring Gore province, they are trying to sell two daughters, nine-year-old Litan and four-year-old Zeton for a thousand US dollars each. Do you know why they're selling you? The journalist asked Zeton. 
Because we are a poor family and don't have any food to eat, she says. Are you scared, he asks. Yes, I am. Another family in Gore province borrowed money from their 70-year-old neighbour. Now he's demanding it back, but they have nothing to give, except their 10-year-old daughter, Magul. My daughter doesn't want to go and is crying all the time. I am so ashamed, he says. Terrified, she threatens to take her life. If they push me to marry the old man, I will kill myself. I don't want to leave my parents. Days later, she discovers the sale has been finalised. Another Afghan child sold into a life of misery. Jake, it is just gut-wrenching knowing what these young girls will be subjected to. And just an update on young Magul, uh, the last girl in our story there. She will be handed over to the 70-year-old man uh, in the coming days. Uh, it's just a tragic fate that awaits this young girl. Now, if the aid situation is not addressed urgently, the UN projects, Jake, that by the middle of next year... 97% of Afghans will be living below the poverty line, not meaning that <laughs> hunger and starvation will be facing these people alone, but that other girls will end up like Magal and Pawana, Jake. Yeah, this is such a horrible story. It's so tough to watch. You, you know that this, this happened, this, mm. this tradition, this awful thing was predated uh, the Taliban taking over again. But... How has the Taliban takeover in Afghanistan earlier this year made it worse? How has it exacerbated this problem of families selling their daughters? So, uh, absolutely. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. This has been around f f for forever. However, from the local journalists that, that we've been speaking to and, and working with, they say that once upon a time it was behind closed doors, now it is out in the open. Uh, the international community is obviously refusing to recognise the Taliban as the official government and as a result they are freezing billions of dollars in reserves that would you know, otherwise go to the people of Afghanistan. They're doing this to, to try and hold the Taliban to account, especially on their record regarding human rights, of women and, and, uh, and of young girls. But by punishing the Taliban, it means that that money is not getting to Afghans most vulnerable, which obviously includes the girls in our piece, Jake. Really tough, really tough to watch. Anna Corrin, thank you so much for that important story.